could Canon be getting ready to announce the EOS R5 C Mark II alongside the R5 Mark II in the last week of May? Well, on February the 4th, 2024, we reported that Canon registered two cameras, thanks to Chinese blogger E8M 8888. The S12 6922 is the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. The second camera, ID 0179, is a cinema camera of whose identity we weren't sure about, but suspected it could be a cinema version of the EOS R5, R1, or some other cinema model in much need of a refresh. Then on March the 29th, we reported another registration. Again, thanks to E8M8888. And that's ID 126928, the Canon EOS R1. The last piece of the puzzle. Canon rumors reported the same information and came to the same conclusion as us, writing that DS126922 is the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, and ES126928 is the Canon flagship mirrorless camera, the Canon EOS R1. Over the past couple of months, I've been asked this question many times. Could one of these camera registrations indeed be the Canon EOS R5 C Mark II, the one ID 0179 registered at the exact same time as the Canon EOS R5 Mark II? And I said at the time, well, it's certainly plausible. It makes sense. I mean, if you're going to release an R5 and an R5C, why wouldn't you do them at the same time? One's photocentric and the other is video centric. Makes an awful lot of sense, right? Well, there's just one problem. You see, the Canon EOS R5C was released two years ago, and that's two years after the Canon EOS R5 Mark I. That's a pretty short time frame for refreshing a cinema camera, especially as there are many Canon cinema cameras in Canon's lineup right now, today, in much need of a refresh. This is what Canon rumors had to say. We've had two anonymous sources suggest that Canon will indeed release the EOS R5 C Mark II alongside the EOS R5 Mark II. Two anonymous sources. Well, that sounds good, doesn't it? You'll notice that there's no CR1, CR2, CR3, or even a CR0 here. They're from unknown, untrusted sources. They're not validated in any way whatsoever, and my sources haven't told me anything about the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, let alone the Canon EOS R5 C Mark II. We keep getting kind of high-level stuff that's saying, yes, these cameras are coming, but no specifics. Hmm. Two, multiple, at least, two, two sources that are untrusted and unknown? Well, Canon Rumors went further, stating that we can't confirm this, but we're throwing it out there. Please don't take it as fact. It's just what we've been told. While this would be obviously very welcomed by Canon shooters and make some sense, Please don't take it as fact. Well, you see, that's the problem with putting it out there because, as you and I both know, people don't always read from the beginning all the way to the end. They see what they want, or maybe they just look at a thumbnail or a title, and they assume it's to be the gospel truth. Since 2023, and actually I would go back to Black Friday, November of 2022, we've had a lot of leaked specifications for the Canon EOS R1 and the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. In fact, the whole idea of the R1 being the master of everything, jack of all trades, goes back even further. But many of the rumors that we've been told about either contradict previous rumors or other rumors came out after that providing other contradictions or they've, they've proven to be completely wrong. As is the case with Black Friday of 2022, the R5 Mark II was supposed to be coming out in the second half or sorry, around May, June, July of 2023 with a whole bunch of specifications that seemed like they had been stitched together from a Sony customer looking at the Alpha One, looking at the Nikon Z8, and of course the Canon EOS R5. There were some things in there that just didn't make sense, and sure enough, here we are in 2024, and there's no EOS R5 Mark II that was released last year at 61, 60, 62, or even 45 megapixels. So over the past couple of years, when it comes to actually getting leaked or I'd like to say they're leaked, but let's just say specifications on the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, they haven't been very reliable even when they come from trusted sources. So to have somebody who's, or multiple 
sources, unknown, untrusted, saying, yeah, the EOS R5C Mark II is coming out this year, I really wouldn't take that to the bank. I really wouldn't give it a whole lot of credence. I wouldn't, I, I'm, I'm not willing to, it makes an awful lot of sense. I agree. Why not just release these two cameras at the same time? I mean, it's not hard. All you have to do is give it the same hardware, make it a slightly larger body with an active cooling system, and then, of course, update the Cinema OS. Pretty simple, right? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, at this point, one thing we do know is the Canon EOS R5 Mark II is supposed to be announced in the last week of May. Uh, Canon Rumors put out a story a few days ago saying, I believe, the 21st to the 23rd. And they're pretty sure about it, but again, that hasn't been confirmed. And that would mean, again, we're probably looking at a shipping date of sometime in June um, or July for the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. Now, the Canon EOS R1, that one's a little bit more up in the air. We're looking at a development announcement, according to Canon Rumors, that's supposed to happen at the same time as the Canon EOS R5 Mark II and the EOS R5C Mark II, if that happens at the same time. But when will it start shipping? When will we get the official announcement? Well, we could have an official announcement if the dev announcement happens in May. We could see the official announcement happen sometime in, well, July. Let's say early, mid-July before the Olympics. I would say early July, or they're going to push that right into August. And then the shipping dates, well, that could be anywhere. Now, normally what Canon does is they make us wait anywhere from two to six weeks. So if we have an announcement in August, that means it won't start shipping until September or maybe even October because of all that back to school. They might just push it into October. But we also have some lenses that are also supposed to be coming out. So let's do a recap of those. The much anticipated Canon RF 35mm f1.4 L, not f1.2, is expected to be announced alongside the R5 Mark II at the end of May. And it's supposed to include many video focus features, perhaps giving us that quasi-parfocal zooming that we find in the Canon RF 24-105 f2.8 and the RF 70-200mm f2.8 L image stabilized USMZ is expected to be announced in June. And the 200-500mm f4 well, sadly, the only thing we can report on is what we last heard is that it's expected to be announced sometime in the second half. So that most likely means sometime between June and the end of November. And now back to the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. This camera isn't going to be a game changer, not like the EOS R5 Mark I was over the 5D Mark IV. I mean, that camera essentially jumped two generations of cameras. If you look at the 5D Mark IV and where the R5 is, it feels like there's a 10-year gulf between those two cameras. The, the Mark I is an impressive camera, but that doesn't mean to say we're just going to get a minor maintenance update. No, Canon's going to put a lot into this camera. Most likely, we're going to get a stacked sensor. I believe somewhere between 45 and 50 megapixels. And last, the last time I checked, Canon Rumors is now saying 45, whereas before they said 62 or 61, 61 and then 62. So I think somewhere around 45 to 50 megapixels, I think we're going to get a definite boost in dynamic range, ISO performance, all that low light stuff, because, well, why? Well, that's what a stacked sensor does. That's also what a backside illuminated sensor does. And what this should help us with is reduce significantly any leftover rolling shutter. I don't think we're going to get dual CF Express type B cards. One of the reasons for that, come on, the R3, released for $6,000, had one. It was only $500 off the 1DX Mark III, which we haven't seen any price discounts on the 1DX Mark III yet. That's one thing I find interesting, and I will get to some of the discounts because it also helps shape up a story as well. So the R5 Mark II, it looks like it is happening in May. One thing Canon Rumors said is we don't know the exact date and time yet, but it's definitely going to happen before the end of May. Okay, so that sounds good. I mean, Guys, we gotta, we've got to give it up for Craig because he's been very accurate reporting rumors over the past few years. But what we've seen happen in 2023 and 2024 isn't Craig's fault. There's been a fundamental shift in the marketplace. Canon has done a much better job of controlling leaks, and that's what we're seeing here. And maybe even doing a little bit of disinformation. All right, now, one thing that's really important here is to take a look at some of the prices of some of Canon's, some of, let me try that again, of some of Canon's high-end bodies because there's a really interesting story here. The Mark I, released back in 2020, is still on sale for $29.99 at B&H 
Adorama, and Amazon.com. But once again, Adorama is tossing in a 128GB CF Express Type-B card along with a card reader for the exact same price. And the R5C is heavily discounted to $35.99. And that's a huge discount over its release price, which was what, somewhere around $45.99? That's about $1,000 off, $900 off. That, that's a really big deal. That's, that's one of those inventory clearing prices, as we're seeing with the Canon EOS R5 Mark I. But there's another camera that also has seen a rather significant price discount, and that's the Canon EOS R3. It's on sale for $44.99, $1,500 off the launch price of $59.99 just a couple of years ago. And the Canon 1DX Mark III, as I said, no discount at all, none whatsoever. So that's rather interesting. What we're seeing is a lot of Canons, with the exception of the 1 Series, everything is heavily discounted. So an R5 Mark II? Yeah, plausible. An R5C Mark II? Well, a little bit more plausible than it was last month, right? And the R3? Well, no, I don't think we're going to get the R3 refreshed, uh, according to Canon rumors going back many, many months. We're looking at the R3 Mark II to be coming out sometime in 2025. So there you have it. And if you're looking at purchasing any of these camera deals, there's some really amazing deals on right now, not just those Panasonic, Nikon as well, and a whole bunch of Canon lenses, big deals, then please use my affiliate links down below if you're purchasing from Adorama, b &H, or Amazon.com. I get anywhere from 2 to 12% back, which really goes back to helping support this channel. A big chance, uh, thanks to David for purchasing something recently. This channel wouldn't be where it is today. I wouldn't be pumping out seven videos a week covering patent application, covering news, forecasting the market, covering sales, if I was just around 1,000 subscribers because I just wouldn't have that. When, you, when, you're in, when you're doing this for about four or five years and you see that constant growth, you see it in viewership, you see it in revenue, it spurs you to do more, to get more creative, to spend more time and to invest into the business a whole lot more. If I was still around that 1,000, 2,000 subscriber mark after four, four going, going on five years, I probably would not really do much of this at all. And so a big thanks to everybody that have used my affiliate links. And for those of you that regularly comment or like or dislike or provide me with criticism, I love criticism, not just this is stupid or you suck or that April Fool's video was not funny and hateful. I love it where you provide, hey, I didn't really like this, here's my thought, because it gives me information on how to improve, but everybody else who's reading the comments, and a lot of people do, they can gain some insight as well, the background to this video, and maybe things that I've left out of this video, it starts to create a conversation. We don't have forums on YouTube, the comments are the best way. And if you have any information about cameras that are coming out or lenses, well then reach out to my email address and I have that, um, well, I guess I'll just put it here, but you can always get that by just going to the info page. I have my email address there. You can always reach out to me. But a big thanks to you for watching and for staying all this time to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great day, a great weekend, and we'll see you again soon.